Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to start a very new chapter. This one is the 8th chapter from Integrated Social Science Ratna Sagar Class 6, India Physical Features. We know that India is a land of diversity in all manners, isn't it? From culture to economy and even the landscape of India has diverse elements, all on one landmass. The wide range of physical features of India makes the country a complete geographical study, isn't it? In fact, India has every possible landscape that the earth has. From cold mountains to arid deserts, vast plains, hot and humid plateau, tropical islands, the physical features of India cover every terrain, isn't it? And in this particular chapter, this is what we are going to study about, about the physical divisions of India. Before starting the chapter, let us move to the next slide and see that about the contents we are going to discuss today. The contents which we are going to discuss today are Indian subcontinent, subcontinent, four physical divisions, the northern mountains, the northern plains, the peninsular plateaus, the coastal plains and the islands. Today we will be discussing the northern mountains only, the other three physical divisions will be discussed in the next video session. Now if we are talking about Indian subcontinent, okay. We'll now be heading toward the topic Indian subcontinent and subcontinent. So, if we are talking about Indian subcontinent, does Indian subcontinent only mean India? No. In the Indian subcontinent does not only mean India. It includes other South Asian countries like Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Maldives as well. But why they are called subcontinent? Have you ever wondered? So before going to the conclusion, going to the uh, uh, reaching the answer that why it is called the Indian subcontinent, we need to first understand what a subcontinent is. So a subcontinent is a big geographical unit which stands out distinctly from the rest of the continent. What is a subcontinent? A subcontinent is a big geographical unit which stands out distinctly from the rest of the continent. Now, why it is called the Indian subcontinent? Why the countries like India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Maldives are called Indian subcontinent are a part of Indian sub subcontinent because these countries are separated from rest of the Asia. You can see here how these countries are separated from rest of the Asia by the Himalayan mountain ranges. Okay, the subcontinent is separated from rest of the Asia by the Himalayan mountain ranges okay that is why these countries together is are called the indian subcontinent and we know that india is a vast country and has a great variety of physical features like high mountains extensive flat plains plateaus and fertile river valleys and india can be broadly divided into following four divisions. What are those four divisions? Those four divisions are the northern mountains, the northern plains, the peninsular plateaus, the coast, the coastal plains and the islands. Okay, so these are the four physical divisions of India. Now, today we will be discussing the northern mountains only. When we are talking about northern mountains, we need to understand few things regarding it. Okay, the northern mountains basically 
the himalayan mountains from the northern mountain region of india we will be considering we will be discussing here the the northern mountains include the himalayan and the karakoram mountain ranges as well as the purvanchal hill ranges as well as you can see here that the northern mountains stretch across the northern boundary of india talking about the pamir north as you can see here in this map here is pamir north okay pamir north is known as the roof of the world why it is known the roof of the world because of its great height and this pamir north basically um, actually center in the gorno badakhsha autonomous region of eastern tajikistan okay it is known as the roof of the world why because of its great height and several mountain ranges run in all directions from this north coming on to the karakoram the karakoram and the himalayas are located along the northern frontier of india let me show you the map the next map turning on to the next map okay so the karakoram the karakoram and the himalayas are located along the northern frontiers of india they these are the highest mountain ranges in the world and these are young fold mountains when we are talking about karakoram range the karakoram range well basically the karakoram mountains lie between the pamir north and the indus river in jammu and kashmir okay the karakoram river the karakoram mountain lies between the pamir north and the indus river in jammu and kashmir it extends eastwards from the pamir north okay it extends eastwards from the pamir north for about 800 km this region has many glaciers such as baltoro and siachen let me show you the map if you are able to see it more clearly okay i uh, so there are many glaciers here okay so this is the region where we are having siachen glacier here is the siachen glacier okay and there are many glaciers found in this particular region and a number of snow covered mountains are also mountain peaks are also there here in this region now talking about here you can see the fourth number okay this one is the mount godwin austin or k2 at a height of 8611 meters this one is the highest peak in india and the second highest in the world and this peak lies in the karakoram mountains okay come again let me repeat it once again once more mount godwin austin also called k2 is the highest peak in india and the second highest in the world and this peak lies in the karakoram range towards the south of the karakoram range are the ladakh and zaskar range okay you can see here the ladakh and the zaskar range the indus river in the kashmir region flows between these these two ranges okay these ranges the indus river in the kashmir region flows between these ranges the ladakh and the zaskar range talking about the himalayas the himalayas extend from the indus river in the west to the brahmaputra river in the east himalaya means a border of snow these mountains run from west to east for about 2500 km you can see here this is an arc shape okay these mountains are in arc shape are having a shape of arc okay these mountains basically run from west to east and uh, for about 2500 km the width varies from about 400 km in the west in kashmir okay you can see here here the width is 400 kilometers and uh, to about 150 kilometers in the 
east you can see here in Anura in arunachal pradesh okay so the width varies from about 400 km in the west to about 150 km in the east and the himalayas consists of three ranges okay the himalayas consists of three ranges these three ranges are parallel to each other okay from north to south these are the himadri you can see here is the map the himadri okay the himadri known as the great himalaya next the himachal known as the lesser himalaya and the third one is the shivalik known as the outer himalaya now we will be dealing with these uh, ranges also okay as these are the three parallel ranges of himalayas okay turning on to the next slide and let us discuss about these uh, um, himalayan ranges when we are talking about the himadri the himadri is also known as the greater himalaya it is the highest mountain range in the world and most of the mountain peaks here are permanently under snow okay do remember these things okay most of the mountain peaks here are permanently under snow and mount peak in the world and kanchanjunga okay here the 11 number is the kanchanjunga okay kanchanjunga is the highest peak in the indian himalayan ranges the height of mount everest is 8848 meter and the height of kanchanjunga is 8598 meter okay turning on to the next range that is the himachal range the himachal range uh, is also known as the lesser himalaya it lies toward the south of the himadri and the important mountain ranges found in these this range are the peer panjal and the dholadhar okay let me show you the peer panjal and the dholadhar also here from the with the help of this map okay so here in this uh, particular region here is the peer panjal okay here is peer panjal and here is dola dhar so these two are the important mountain ranges in this particular region there is a pass in the peer panjal range the name of that pass is banihal pass okay the jammu kashmir highway passes through the pass okay the name of the pass is banihal pass which is located in the peer panjal range and there is an is a highway named jammu kashmir highway that passes through the banihal pass and many popular hill stations such as shimla dalhousi kullu manali masuri nainital and darjeeling are situated in these mountain ranges moving to the next mountain range and that is the shivalik coming to the shivalik range the shivalik range is also known as the outer himalaya and this range is the southernmost mountain ranges these ranges are made up of loose deposits of soft rocks mud and silt and because it this ranges uh, these ranges are made up of loose deposits of soft rocks mud and silt so these ranges are uh, prone to landslides okay landslides are common in this part of himalaya and it is having the purvanchal ranges as well let me show you the purvanchal ranges as well with the help of a map so i think you are able to see the purvanchal ranges okay the purvanchal ranges are found along the eastern boundary of india and they form a series of low hills okay they have patkai bum as you can see a uh, patkai bum and the naga hills okay in the north and the mizo hills in the south here is the mizo hills okay and the in the central part it has the garo the khasi and the jaintia hills so purvanchal ranges form a series of low hills they have patkai bum and naga hills in the north the mizo hills in the south and the central part has the garo and 
garo khasi and jaintia hills so several big rivers as you can see coming back to one more slide okay as in this map it is very much clear that several big rivers originate from the himalayas okay you can see here the rivers are here okay so several big rivers originate from the himalayas and most of them flow from northern plains okay you can see here that they are flowing in the northern plains okay the yamuna the ganga the ghagra the gandak the kosi the son okay most of them flow through the northern plains and fall either into the bay of bengal or the arabian sea okay most of the rivers flow through the northern plain and fall either into the bay of bengal or the arabian sea this was all about the northern mountains in the next video we'll be reading about the northern plains let us recapitulate what we have read till now we have read that india is divided into four distinct physical features the northern mountains the northern plains the peninsular plateaus the coastal plains and the islands coming on to the next thing which we have learned the himalayas are an arc shaped chain of mountains located along the northern frontier of india and there are three parallel ranges in the himalayas the himadri or the greater himalaya the himachal or the lesser himalaya the shivalik or the outer himalaya the purvanchal ranges are located along the eastern boundary of india and these purvanchal ranges form a series of low hills they have patkai bum and naga hills in the north the mizo hills in the south and the central part has the garo khasi and the jaintia hills this was all about the northern mountains which we have discussed so far in the next uh, chapter in the next video module we will be discussing the northern mountains till then till then have a nice day and uh, do read the topic first and then watch the video thank you and have a nice day